Yes, hello everybody. So the recordings are on. Um, we just published the recording of um, yesterday's town hall session. So um, that's available on YouTube and a peer tube version is coming soon as well. So we're recording this one as well and we can hopefully put it online very, very quickly. So welcome everybody. Um, I'm Mike Saunders from the Document Foundation. Um, the uh, town hall Q&A session today. Thanks for being here. Um, I see candidates, I see community members as well. So um, we'll have some discussions. We can um, uh, pose questions, answer questions as well. The candidates can answer questions. Um, but before we begin, um, the, uh, let's do a quick round of introductions. Um, from the candidates and uh, let's uh, keep the introductions quite short. So two, two and a half minutes. I want to be super strict, but um, because we want to discuss lots of different things. So introductions two, two and a half minutes. Um, and we'll start off using my random Jitsi order in my grid layout. Everything is, uh, is random here. So um, first up in, my random order is Balash. Balash, would you like to introduce yourself for two minutes or so? Oh, it's super fast. <laughs> Just starting to talk. Uh, yeah, of course. So my name is Balash Vargo. I'm from Hungary, uh, from Budapest. Mm, I'm working at Allotropia uh, at the moment, and I started to develop on LibreOffice since 2017, something like that. Mm, uh, I graduated as a software engineer, so uh, I always liked, liked uh, the open source areas. That's how I ended up in the uh, around the LibreOffice in 2017. First of all, in uh, Hungarian team. Mm. Yeah, I work together with Laszlo Nimet and Gabor Kalman in the first times. Mm. At the moment, I am mm, part of the membership committee as a substitute member. It was my first uh, time. And yeah, I would like to continue contributing uh, on the next session in the membership committee. That's why I applied again. Good afternoon, good morning, good night. Sorry for being a bit late. So, thanks, Balash. Um, next up uh, for introductions is Shinji. Hi, Shinji. Okay. Hello. Hi, we can hear you, Shinji. Okay. okay. Thank you. Okay. I'm Shinji Enoki. I live in uh, Japan and I'm freelance. And uh, I also work on a support business for LibreOffice. And I start a uh, contribution open office era uh, 2008. And after uh, I joined the Bros community and uh, found the uh, Japanese team. My main activity, uh, sorry, <laughs> is committee organized for uh, Japanese community and event organized in Japan. Uh, and sometimes uh, quality assurance or uh, ask what translation. I served as membership committee deputy for four years uh, from uh, 2020. And so I want to so uh, communicate to the global committee and the local committee and 
So, and, uh, and I want to uh, so spread to the uh, mostly Asian committee. So invite the membership. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Shinji. Next up for introductions is Gustavo. Gustavo. We can't hear you, Gustavo. At least I can't hear you. Yeah, I cannot hear. But maybe it's muted. No, nobody can hear you, Gustavo, I'm afraid. While Gustavo um, fixes that, let's hear from an introduction from uh, Andreas. Andreas. Okay. Hi, I'm Andreas. I'm from Germany. I'm a member of the um, project or contributing to the project uh, since 2002. Um, uh, I have worked in uh, very different areas of the project from documentation over um, uh, services for, um, for the project to marketing uh, events and uh, a bit of development but only a slight bit so uh, I have some experience in different areas of the project um, there's a, my opinion is that it's uh, very important to value every part of uh, the problem um, of contributions uh, to the project in different areas uh, no one, no, uh, no contribution to any part is more worth than uh, the contribution to other parts. That's uh, the same as you do in, uh, in documentation, user uh, help, or something else. That's not a uh, minor uh, value for any part of the project. So I will want to do. Uh, um, uh, something to make it more clear uh, what are the contributions uh, the, uh, value um, for the um, membership and we should uh, do um, um, a paper where it uh, describes um, what um, um, contributions are value uh, for a membership application. So okay. that's it. Thanks, Andreas. Uh, I still don't see Gustavo yet. So, Cor, you're on. Cor. Yes. Good. Good day again. Good afternoon. Uh, some, some light on the back. What I need? I am Cor Naus, Netherlands, um, and involved since 2004 in uh, obviously open office to work, and um, been around in in many areas of the project. Um, quite some QA, um, translation, back in the days, marketing, local activities, uh, some hacking, board, uh, MC, more MC, etc. Um, so that's fun. And I'm, I'm, I'm glad to, uh, uh, that uh, we live in a community where all contributions are rewarded and all people are welcome. Uh, and I want to... Uh, one of the things uh, that I want to do is is make sure that that people actually realize and have that feeling. Um, and one other thing that I would love to do, uh, apart from the regular tasks that the statues have for the uh, MC, another thing that I would love to do is help the board in in growing the community. Um, yeah, that's it for now. Thanks. Okay, thanks, Cor. Uh, Gustavo is back. Gustavo, would you like to try again your introduction? Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you now. Uh, okay, fine. Um, I'm Gustavo. I'm from Brazil. Uh, probably um, all of you know who I am. I am 
at the moment at the current moment i'm a member of the membership committee and um i uh, self-nominated my candidacy to work to keep my work in two main uh, uh, fronts the formal work inside the membership committee and uh, the marketing uh, in Latin America. Uh, as we are talking to the Asian community, um, I think it's important to say uh, something about the relation of the Latin American community with the Asian community. Uh, first, um, it's interesting because uh, the Asian conference in Japan five years ago was a reference for us to have our first Latin American conference. Uh, another interesting point is that uh, we are looking uh, with attention we, uh, in the Taiwanese project that have a lot of uh, uh, interesting information to share with the global community about how to uh, have a government project uh, to adopt and migrate to ODF and LibreOffice. Uh, this is a really interesting point to uh, make connections between our community and our community in Latin America and uh, the Asian community. We started um, a relation about uh, LibreOffice in government in our last uh, Latin American conference when we had uh, a in uh, and a uh, speaker invited uh, Franklin uh, talking about the experience in Taiwan and uh, it was amazing for our members in Mexico uh, and another really nice point to highlight is the work uh, of the Indonesian community uh, involving and engaging young people in the project. This is uh, an experience I think we can uh, uh, learn, we can uh, 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 understand and repeat uh, in other places uh, of the world. Um, I think we, we should have uh, learn more with the Asian community because uh, there are really nice points. They are doing a great job. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Gustavo. So I believe that is now all of the candidates who are present in the meeting, but please somebody correct me if I'm wrong, if anybody has joined in the last few minutes that I've not noticed. But now I think that's all the candidates. So thanks for your introductions. So now we can open up the meeting to discussions. So um, anybody uh, can pose questions, of course, um, either raise your hand and you can um, ask a question here. Or of course, we have the chat as well. Um, which we can use as an alternative. We used yesterday um, for some questions and answers as well. For the chat, I read everything else um, that's in the chat as well, uh, just for the benefit of those people who are listening to the um, recording, um, just listening to the audio as well. So I will read out the chat um, to help. And then, um, yeah, but again, if uh, if you want to ask something, raise your hand or write something in the chat and we can start off. Um, the first question uh, is from Torsten, who says, a question to all candidates. 
Many of you said that all contributions are important, on which I agree. But can you give examples? Should you be elected, what is and also what is not a suitable contribution qualifying for membership? Gustavo. Uh, to, um, <laughs> it's interesting because uh, sometimes uh, we inside the membership committee uh, should uh, 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 clarify this kind of uh, 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 question for the candidates to the membership. For example, sometimes we have uh, people um, uh, asking, requ uh, people uh, uh, requesting the membership um, with the the uh, argument of uh, donate money. <laughs> uh, I donate money and I want to be member of TDF. I love the project uh, and uh, I I want to join you. Um, okay, it's amazing have a donation and this kind of interest, but we know uh, this is not the kind of contribution we uh, uh, we we want, uh, and we it's in our statutes. Uh, another um, kind of um, uh, of argument for the membership is uh, like uh, I use LibreOffice and uh, I want to be a member. Okay you use, but you have uh, non-trivial and continuous contributions to be a member. Uh, and, um, well, uh, this is uh, the kind of uh, uh, known uh, common uh, uh, interest from people who uh, have uh, the first contact with our project. Sometimes we can clarify and maybe the person uh, uh, can join us with uh, the correct path to follow. Uh, and sometimes people say, okay, thank you. And uh, I, I love your project and keep the work. Uh, and this is uh, uh, the reference for us what we have in our statutes and uh, the continuous and non-trivial uh, work uh, contributions in case. Thank you. Any other responses to Torsten's question? Um, I Two very quickly at the same time, but um, the first hand up is on my screen is Andreas at least, Andreas. Okay, this, the statute uh, says, as uh, uh, we, um, Gustavo uh, explained, that's uh, not trivial uh, contributions, and uh, it's uh, very in every part of the possible uh, contributions, it has not to be contri uh, um, trivial. Uh, so it takes some effort. And some time to uh, to uh, have a val valued uh, contribution. If you, for example, in documentation you uh, wrote uh, how to, and uh, that uh, consumes uh, not only some minutes but uh, a lot of time. Mostly, do that. I have uh, written myself something like that. Uh, then it's not trivial. Or if you go to uh, to events and promote uh, LibreOffice, then it's uh, also not trivial. It costs time. So, only some examples. That's uh, the uh, in, you have to uh, review every uh, single uh, single contribution. If it's not trivial, that's not uh, you cannot uh, say something like in general how much uh, time it needs. You you need to look on every uh, single part to um, see uh, if it's not trivial or and have some effort. 
Maybe if I may, a quick follow-up question on on Andreas. Um, let's let's uh, get Core's answer first for the um, for the order, and then yes, follow up Torsten. But first, Core. Yes, right buttons. Yeah, I I think it it's a very difficult question, um, because it it. Uh, it means, uh, hey, where do we draw the line? Someone who writes, let's say, uh, one great article of three pages every year, is that wonderful? Uh, and is that better than someone who writes three articles of half a page of, of medium quality a year, which is better, which is not? Um, and, and maybe both are not enough to be a serious member of a community that works on promoting, creating a product. I don't know. So it's, it's, it's an interesting question. Uh, and, and maybe it's good that we, um, yeah, that, that we think out loud in the community on that question. Yeah, why not? OK, Torsten, you want to follow up? Uh, yeah, just very quickly. So um, uh, it would be particularly interesting, uh, Andreas, and maybe also Core. What would be? Would you have an example? Um, and Gustavo already listed a few. What would not be in your? I mean, it's probably a personal question. That's why I'm asking you personally. What would not qualify uh, as uh, um, as a contribution? For example, if you if you fix two lines of code, would that qualify? Or if you go to one event, or if you have to go to three events, things like that. Um, it depends. Two two lines of code may be uh, not enough. I don't know. I'm not a, a core developer, so I don't know how much effort it is to fix two lines of code. Maybe it's a really hard um, effort to get to that two lines of code. Uh, I don't know. Uh, and how? I think the most the most problems uh, with uh, people who uh, ask for membership um, are those who pay some some money donations and those who uh, think uh, uh, using LibreOffice is, is uh, qualifying for a membership. So the most people that uh, ask for membership and has contributed are more uh, shy uh, and uh, think uh, they are not qualified and uh, so they um, apply for membership um, as at a point when they have uh, contributed enough. I think so. Um, Core, then I'll read out Shinji's answer and then I'll do Gustavo, but first Core. Yeah, um, it, it, it's obvious from statues that uh, uh, just using LibreOffice or paying or making donations doesn't uh, 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 justify membership. So I, I, I always wonder, hey, people who use a form and can read what is on it, why they, do they apply? Still, I, I think most interesting is apart from is it one, two or seven lines of code or articles, whatever, um, I think we, if we, if we want to have a community where people are and involved and engaging, then it it says something about being in contact with others, uh, being in more regular contact. I think that that's uh, useful to look at in in the corner cases, and and of course uh, the good thing is that um, also our statues say that. Um, uh, uh, um, that, that what other members know of your contributions, uh, references that that counts uh, for the membership committee uh, in, in making a decision. So, and, and I think that's important because then it's not just uh, some interesting lines of code, which might be few and interesting, but still it, it's about, hey, how can we get along as community? And of course, at the moment that someone, it's a bit on the edge. And I think we did that in the past with the membership 
committee, you always try to encourage people and make clear, ah, oh, that's wonderful, but yeah, if we see continuity, then, then, then it would be great. Okay. Shinji writes, contributing to the community is unquestionable, be it code, Bugzilla, translations, support on ask, help events. A single or few social media posts will not be considered a contribution. I think activity outside of communities hosted by the Document Foundation does not count, but activity related to our projects, such as promoting open document format, count as a contribution. Then Gustavo. Um, um, when we have an application for membership, a new application, uh, in general, we can see um, the work of uh, uh, the candidate in our uh, in our uh, um, uh, systems uh, translation uh, wiki uh, weblate wiki uh, uh, Garrett uh, whatever um, but um, we can also can see the reference of the member who uh, is uh, in contact with the candidate and we can uh, ask the member uh, to uh, confirm the contributions and um, clarify if that uh, if uh, uh, those two lines of uh, um, code have the uh, enough complexity to um, confirm the contribution. Um, it's interesting because uh, sometimes we also have uh, members to renew with a lot of contributions during years and years and years and for a personal reason. Uh, the member um, didn't reach the the enough contributions uh, in in the last period of time. Uh, this is a, 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 a common case we handle in the membership committee, and uh, we also understand the personal situation of the member. The most important in my opinion, is the member wants to, to continue as a member. Uh, it's important because sometimes the member need a, a time uh, to solve his personal issues and come back in future. Or uh, sometimes the member are just saying, I want to keep my membership, but I didn't work as I want, uh, I, as I would like in the past uh, uh, period. Uh, so the membership committee uh, should have uh, 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 should care with these situations because uh, it's important for us retain members, even. In, in technical areas uh, as development or uh, uh, translation, uh, infra, uh, uh, quality assurance, uh, or even also in marketing and uh, uh, relation with the users in ASK, for example, it's important for us. So, uh, being a member of the membership committee, it's not is not it's more than mathematics. It's also relation among people. Thank you. So Balash writes. In the chat, well, if someone does something small in many small steps for a longer period of time, say half a year, that might be good. 
It's about the quantity, so not one or two times. On the other hand, it should be something that's verified, not just announcing that you have put LibreOffice on 10 school computers in somewhere, but something that can be verified, for example, in version control, on a blog, internet, or in a local newspaper. Next up to speak is Andreas. Okay, to add a bit more, um, if you if you write on the on the mail on the user's mailing list, for example, uh, and ask for support or something like that, that's not qualifying for a membership. Um, if you um, uh, rent uh, only on on lists uh, and uh, make. Uh, uh, bad comments or whatever that qualifies not for a membership but if it count it's not, not the, the the number of the of contribution maybe one contribution could be also uh, a value for a um, for the membership if you for example um, uh, work uh, on a big e event like uh, the office conference or um, the FOSTEM organization um, of, of for the project uh, that we have uh, a booth or and uh, um, a room there and uh, work for uh, for the um, whole um, organization for the project to get people there uh, that might uh, also be a value uh, contribution and at Fostum is only one time a year, so that's uh, that's not not the mum the number uh, of um, of contributions is as uh, alone a uh, criteria. Uh, it's the value of contribution that can can be one time or more than one time. It it depends. You have to uh, evaluate every contribution uh, and. Uh, look at it if it's uh, not trivial. Shinji responds to Balash's message in the chat writing. I don't think it necessarily means that if there is no open evidence, it won't be accepted. I think in many cases it's okay if other contributors can confirm it. Otherwise, contributors in a particular area will be exclu excluded from the membership. To which Balash responds to Shinji. Yes, agree, of course. In many cases, it's okay if other contributors can confirm it. I forget that as an evidence. Then we have a question from Al saying, a technical question about the membership committee elections. Is the membership committee size currently fixed so that we choose a slate or will we be voting for or against each candidate? Or perhaps we rank the candidates by preference? To which Torsten responds, same as for board elections, from what I can tell. But any other candidates want to respond to that? Gustavo? Um... The election is um, the same uh, uh, process than the board election. Uh, I, I'm not sure I, I understand the EAL point. Um, rank. Uh, it's a rank, right? It's a rank by preference. You, sh you should vote according uh, your preference in a list of in your list of preference. Okay. Hi. Um, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um, Heiko writes, how about a lifetime membership for contributors who earned it? Um, Andreas? Oh, I can, can give an uh, answer to both. Uh, Eyal's question about uh, the um, elections, uh, it's, uh, it's written down in the, in the status. It's uh, the same as the board. It, the ranking is uh, also descript uh, described there. Uh, the, the election system is also uh, 
fixed. It's uh, all in the statutes. Um, and uh, Heiko, if you look at uh, the statutes, there is no lifetime membership uh, that needs would need an, uh, a change in the mem uh, in the statutes, and that's not that difficult, uh, not that easy. So, <laughs> Gustavo, yeah, it's curious because uh, in the in the old MC MCM script, uh, the the tool I I use it uh, to handle the membership. We had uh, a kind of uh, membership uh, called Emeritus. We didn't use for nothing, <laughs> but it was in the script. Uh, maybe in the past, someone had this idea and, and put in the code, but uh, we, we didn't use uh, because the, 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 the uh, reasons Andreas uh, said in, in our statutes, but it's interesting. Maybe in future we can um, we can think about it. Thank you. Al writes: the board of directors and membership committee elections are quite different in that the board of directors has seven members. The size of the membership committee is not fixed in the statutes. It can be up to 10% of the board of, I guess he means board of directors. Uh, Andreas? Oh, wait. Okay. Board AL, of trustees. Board, oh, board of trustees. Sorry. Yes. So AL says it can be up to 10% of the board of trustees. Yep. Thank you. Uh, Andreas? Okay. It's a, it's a decision of the board. Uh, long longer time ago, and uh, if the board uh, the board has decided that it's uh, uh, five members and four uh, deputy members, and uh, if the board uh, will won't change the, this decision, then it's uh, for uh, for the next the the numbers of for the next election. Uh, if uh, the board uh, thinks about another one the um, member then uh, it has to um, make a, a new decision and change it that's uh, not fixed in the in the statutes but um, fixed by the board okay any more responses or thoughts on this Shinji writes, Heiko, I don't agree with that. I don't think things should be decided by people who are not currently active members. However, it might be possible to create honorary members without voting rights in addition to general members. So I think rules need to be changed. So, any other questions or right, thoughts from anybody? Feel free to raise your hand, of course, or write in the chat. AL writes, there might be legal implications of adding categories of trustees. And AL, you'd like to speak? Go ahead. AL? If you're speaking, we can't hear you. At least I can't hear you. Can anybody else hear AR? No, I can't hear, sir. Mm, yeah, we can't hear you, I'm afraid, AR. Maybe yeah, it's, it's better if you write it in the chat because we can't hear you. 
Okay, Al will write down his uh, question or response, and then I will read it out, of course. Um, but yes, in the meantime, other questions, other topics, other thoughts, go ahead. Hey, Jonah. Hi, I see Jonah just arrived. So, um, uh, Jonah, <laughs> uh, Jonah, if you want to um, give your quick introduction as well, um, we just finished discussing a few topics. So, um, while people think of more questions, feel free to do a, a quick one, two minute introduction. Jonah. Yeah. Hi, hi, everyone. Sorry for being late. Um, so I'm Yona. I'm from Tirana, Albania. Um, I joined the LibreOffice community around 2016, where I attended my first LibreOffice conference in Czech Republic. Uh, and then later, together with OpenLabs Hackerspace, um, I was more involved uh, in advocating about uh, LibreOffice, organizing local events. Um, and one of them, was also organizing one of the Libocons uh, that happened in Tirana. Um, I've been part of the MC membership committee before, and um, currently I'm part of the Code of Conduct committee. Thanks, Yona. So, yes, any more questions for the candidates or thoughts, topics, ideas? Go ahead. Um, by the way, Yona and anybody else who joined a bit later, if you can see the chat, um, the chat history, and you want to respond to any of the previous uh, questions in the chat, then go ahead. Don't. See Al here, but I guess he might come back to. Write. I'm not sure. It, I'm not sure if people who join later see the previous chat. I don't remember. So if in doubt, maybe read out uh, the questions from the chat. Yeah. I'm not sure from when on the chat is visible. Chat chat is uh, kept uh, during the whole meeting. If you join later, you can see it. Uh, Okay, yeah, well, let's check that. Um, Jonah, see if you can see the chat from um, from the start of the call. Um, let us know if you can't, and I can yeah. post, paste some questions. Or can you see it, Jonah? Yeah, the first message that I see is from AI at 2.19. So uh, that's the first one. E there was um, one question from Torsten just before that, asking about what is and what is not a suitable contribution qualifying for membership. So if you want to answer that in a moment, then feel free. Otherwise, yeah, then you you see the rest of the chat. So that's good. Yeah. Um, then we have now a, a question from Torsten saying again to all candidates, there's been some discussions about the many things different candidates wanted to do if elected. Some of that being things that, for example, also board members wanted to do. What do people think? Can those roles be combined? Gustavo. Um, I think we should um, uh, create uh, more collaboration 
we, the membership committee, with the board. Um, I was uh, specific with my candidacy because um, I have all my time, um, my collaborative time, um, busy with the Latin American conference. We, we, are, we are just few people involved and we don't have at this time uh, the, um, uh, a local member, a local liberal officer member there in, in, the, in the venue of the conference to help us. Um, but I think the Latin American conference is uh, the way that I can do my goals inside the membership committee. Um, and also I have uh, my formal tasks inside the membership committee because I uh, keep my responsibility to finish the lists uh, in each quarter. Uh, because this I put in my candidacy, these two fronts. But I think uh, we as a team, we as a membership committee should uh, organize a common uh, list of topics uh, to propose a way to contribute with the board and share responsibilities with the board. Uh, the membership committee uh, is uh, a body with a lot of responsibilities, but uh, these responsibilities are um, specific in our statutes. Many uh, activities the membership committee should propose to the board, to the uh, team, to the community, uh, but um, do not um, run it run them by uh, your itself. So I think we should uh, start a contribution with the board and the community based in uh, a list of uh, items we can really reach. Uh, some candidates uh, provide uh, other ideas, uh, other uh, aspects. These are really fine, but I think we, inside the membership committee, if elected, should uh, organize a new list of goals to share, based in the, in the contributions from the candidates. Uh, the elected candidates to propose and uh, do it with the collaboration with the board, with the team, with, and with the community. Community in all aspects. I, I, I'm saying uh, all aspects of the community, individuals, uh, groups, uh, NGOs, other software projects, companies, at all. Thank you. Okay, Yona is next. Yona? Yeah, uh, so um, I think even that there might be some overlapping um, of what people want to do as part of the board or MC, I think most important is to work together because in the end, you know, we are trying to achieve something for the whole community. Uh, so as long as we have an um, environment that is like positive, welcoming or warm, uh, it's much easier to uh, work all together to achieve something that we want to do. Uh, because, for example, even if um, as MC we want to start a survey for something specific, 
uh, in the end, we will need to work all together. We, we need to have also the support of the board, um, either like some feedback or something more specific. So I think it's not that important to have sometimes very clear division who will do something, but it's more important to have an environment that everyone can work together and collaborate and have some, let's say, better cooperation, uh, which, um, uh, like I think also with uh, with a new board now, um, some things uh, have like improved, um, uh, like, um, and I think also you know that's why it's very important also with the new MC that will come to continue having this collaboration uh, with the board and have um, some nice cooperation with them because MC cannot do everything alone. But when you do all together, the, the board, the trustees, the team working all together, then it will be easier to achieve things that we want as a community. OK, any more responses to this or any other questions, thoughts, ideas? Hey, I see your microphone flicking on and off again in Jitsi, so I don't know if um, you're trying to talk, but um, let us know if you want to say something or, of course, write in the chat. And in the chat writes, Shinji, increasing TDF membership and working to communicate with the local community is something several candidates and boards want, and I think we can work together on this. What else? We all agree that the issue of TDF transparency is important, but we need to explore what other options are available. Uh, cool. Yes, uh, it, it, it's a good question. Uh, what can you combine? You, you can look at, uh, at it from different perspectives. And yes, uh, what others say, and, and I've, I've told it yesterday as well, cooperation and, and trying to do that well and improve where possible, that's, that's the first thing. Um, and, and, and we have to be careful if, if it is about that things can be uh combined uh, or the people can combine different roles we have to, we have to be careful that's uh, uh that's not the same as as working together on tasks so that's something but uh, in principle it, it's something basically that the board uh, in, in first instance is looking at and yeah and and i think it, it's also uh, uh, <laughs> If I if I see the uh, the ideas uh, of, of all, all us all the candidates together, it, it looks a bit uh, as my own to do list and good ideas and agenda. Uh, it it is sufficient for the next uh, five decades, mm, and I'm not going to do that. So uh, and, and and honestly, also as MC, uh, apart from all good intentions, we we have to try to. Uh, work smart and it, we you you also have to make hard choices you can't visit all conferences together you can't fund any activity uh you have to make hard choices uh and and honestly let me say i think uh while all contributions are important uh the base of of the community still is is growing development uh, growing the code base there there's a lot of good things going on there we have seen a, a wonderful uh, a few days of training well organized in, in Bucharest last year. And I think that's something we can can build on. That doesn't mean that that's other things as, as growing diversity, et cetera, and international uh, presence isn't important. But maybe it, it's, it's a matter of, uh, of organizing it in a smart way so that you combine one with the other thing. That's something I would like to uh, look at with uh, others uh, if I can join the membership committee. Okay, so AL 
wrote his message in the chat. AL wrote, so the Document Foundation has an extremely lopsided distribution of power. The membership, the trustees, have essentially zero power as a body other than electing. We cannot formally adopt any decision or policy which has not been put to us by the board, nor even convene ourselves officially. We can't discuss the rules of the game, i.e. the TDF statutes, nor change them, again, except as the board requests us to. On the other hand, the board is almost all powerful. It controls all employees, the budget, represents the foundation externally, has control of almost all information and property of the TDF, everything. The only vestige of checks and balances vis-a-vis -vis the uh, board of directors is the membership committee. It is up to the membership committee to not work all together with the board of directors to have the role of oversight, of review, of critical assessment. And this is how it is tasked with handling of trustee complaints. It seems to me that many of the candidates are not sufficiently seized of the significance and centrality of this aspect of the role of the membership committee. For this reason, it is important that the membership committee and the board don't share executive duties so as to limit the inkling of the MC to see themselves and the board as being all together, answering together to the membership for all TDF actions. When this happens, the MC will be predisposed to be automatically defensive of board of directors' actions and will and not, able, not be able to watch out for failure or problems in how TDF is run or how the board of directors functions. So that was AL's uh, comment. Next is Core. Core? Yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, I want to say thanks to AL. Uh, th this is, well, not from the bottom of my heart, but um, I, I fully ag agree to that. Uh, th th we have different bodies, different responsibilities. Uh, and so we have to be careful that uh, one covers everything that the other says and the other way around. Fully agree that. Oh, and now we are just looking at the formal positions, yes? Um, on the other hand, cooperating, of course, uh, is, is not the same as agreeing always, far from, I would say. Um, and um, yeah, and, and, and more important if, is if there are complaints uh, of, of, of the magnitude that uh, that deserve a recording has stopped that that deserve appeal with the MC or specific decisions etc uh, if, if something like that happens uh, I recording would, is on I would expect that uh, that in, in, in the time before that uh, a lot of rumors or a lot of people talk about things that are serious enough, and and maybe that should trigger first some, etc. Um, and and indeed, uh, the statutes say uh, that also that decisions can be challenged, etc. So th there are specific tasks uh, that we do have, um, and and I hope that uh, in general we never need them to to the full extent. Then we have Gustavo. Um, it's an interesting point, Eyal. Um, as I, I said yesterday, uh, some uh, uh, parts of the membership committee responsibility was discovered um, in the last term. Uh, in this way, in this way, um, in this way too, not, uh, it's not a, a, a share uh, executive duties with the, the, the uh, team or, or the, the, the board. Uh, I think we, we, in the membership committee was far from, from this, this kind of operation, but uh, about uh, the the aspect of a membership committee as a supervisory board of the foundation, uh, it, it was really recent in in uh, our, our uh, 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 
tasks or, or uh, uh, functions inside uh, the foundation. And uh, what I think uh, in this case is the membership committee should organize uh, the, the flow of the information to the members according the formal laws uh, we should respect. I mean, the German laws uh, of foundations. And in this case, uh, we don't have a, 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 an, a, an opinion. We have the decision to follow the process and share the information with the members. Uh, this is new for us in the membership committee. Uh, in this term, probably um, just I, Chinji, and Balas, but more I uh, have the, the know-how of this uh, process. Uh, and um, I think it, it, it's not a, a, a done process. It, it, this is not defined. Uh, there's a not final uh, uh, um, um, final uh, situation. Uh, we will build our uh, uh, relation uh, with the other board, the other body of the foundation, the the, the board of directors, um, according the formal aspects, the formal uh, normatives, the formal law, uh, and probably. Uh, uh, we will uh, uh, follow this path with the deal, with the goal to be transparent with our members. Thank you. Okay, uh, Yona. Uh, so I, I totally agree with uh, AI uh, when it comes to the role of the MC or when it comes to the more formal positioning, uh, because of course that you know as MC uh, we need to work on having more transparency or some uh, or proper communication, uh, or when we see that things aren't done in the right way, you know the MC needs to speak out or be the voice of the community uh, when something is not happen happening in the right way. Um, so I think definitely this is one of the main things that the MC does. But when it comes to uh, cooperating together, it's like more, um, more like bigger than just the formal positioning. Sometimes it's like more on uh, some initiatives that can be done in the community, and like um, I don't know, related for example to mentoring practices or um, having like uh, more translation to make it uh, the community more accessible and so on. So it's like more on some other aspects than the formal positioning. But when it comes to the formal positioning, uh, yeah, I, I definitely agree that this is one of the things that, um, you know, MC needs to stand out if something isn't going right. Okay. Still have some more time available in the call, of course, in this meeting. So if anybody has any other questions or thoughts, feel free as always to raise your hand or type in the chat. Shinji writes, I see, I may not fully understand, but I understand that the membership committee does not have very strong authority as an auditing body over the board of directors. Its role has been strengthened a bit in areas where it is not rule-based. 
I think that taking on an external audit is something that should be done by the board of directors, but the fact that the MC has taken on this role is a sign of such a change. Ale writes, well, we'll see how these words translate to actions in the matter of board of directors delinquency in the disclosure of documents as per the statutes. Um, Cor and then Gustavo, first yeah. Cor. Again, a close finish with you, Gustavo. <laughs> hey, yeah, and uh, uh, especially IELTS comments. It, um, it, it's always the, uh, the trustees uh, elect the board. Uh, the board is to set out directions and to run, etc., and to to create ideas for the future. That's to manage. That is the board. It doesn't mean that members don't, don't have a saying. They have a lot to say, uh, especially with their hands, with with the work, with their contribute in in the community. That's important. Uh, and still, uh, if it's about the direction or anything, um, yes, it's primary work uh, of the board that we're talking about. It is impossible to share all details, etc., with with our uh, community and 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 get all work done together. Um, and of course, uh, that it's therefore that the statutes tell a lot about uh, procedures to challenge decisions and whatever and it's therefore that there's an audit that the trustees have the responsibility to define an auditor and that the mc has special uh, tasks um and every two years there's new elections um currently that's that's the balance that's how we have balanced uh, the powers activities in our statutes um and if there's need for improvement, of course, that can be explained by example, what's wrong, what went wrong, do we have, do we need to adapt rules to improve that or are there other things we should do? That, that's all fine. Yes. Okay, then Gustavo. I respectfully disagree with my colleague Shinji <laughs> in this point. <laughs> um, I think the membership committee should be responsible to start the process of auditing in behalf of the member in behalf of the board of trustees. Uh, it's part of our uh, checking balances uh, process. Um, uh, and, um, uh, I think, and I, uh, it, it was my position, uh, inside of the membership committee in the current term, uh, I think, uh, the documents, um, has taken that power uh no uh, because we, we are uh, in a flow uh, 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 in a flow uh, uh, of uh, transparency core we should have a body that uh, start the process uh, uh, of auditing for the other bo bodies not only not only the board of directors, but the whole uh, 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 TDF structure. Okay, not not the only the, the board and the decisions of the board, but, but the whole uh, structure. Because we don't have executive duties, uh, the membership company don't have executive duties. We we can propose the actions, but uh, we don't see the membership committee doing the tasks right we don't handle money uh, <laughs> no we disagree we agree in disagree al um it, it's it's interesting because your point you are you are uh, saying are interesting to uh, have a vision for the organization we went for each candidate. And I think we in the membership committee uh, have 
we have a position to uh, pay attention in the formal process, not only for the membership, for the, the common tasks, but only, but, but also for the foundation. Um, and another point I was say is, uh, okay, and we don't have nothing to hide. The membership committee we will start the process auditing or whatever and should share the ah, okay um and share and uh, uh, share the decisions the the uh, uh, arguments the reasons of what is what was right what was wrote in the in the the in the, in the in the documents, the legal documents, to the members, we should be transparent with our decisions because we don't have nothing to hide. Thank you, Gustavo. There was responding um, on the on the go to two comments that came up in the chat, which I will read out for um, completeness. So Al wrote in the chat. I am happy to have triggered some disagreement among the candidates, Smiley. After all, disagreements is part of how we choose which candidates and perspectives to prefer. So thank you to the candidates who reply with more concrete positions. Core also said, while Gustavo was uh, speaking, Core also wrote, I referred to assigning the auditor for the accounting, for the accounting, sorry if that was not clear. Torsten wrote, quite, on that one, any candidate who would commit to getting the auditor confirmed by the members the next year, I'd personally much prefer that over the current behind the curtains approach. Smiley face. Uh, Gustavo? Yes. Uh, I... Uh... I commit with this idea to have the auditor confirmed by the members. We should uh, be transparent with the process to choose uh, the auditor. Thank you. Okay, any other questions or thoughts? Shinji asks in the chat, responding to Torsten's uh, last message about the behind the curtains approach. Shinji writes, Torsten, what exactly is that method? So, so let me use sound then. <laughs> um, yeah, I, yeah, now it's on me not, not to really quite understand the question. Um, so is that referring to the behind the curtains phrase or so maybe to to expand on that so so the um uh, this year and the last year the um the auditor was selected um by the membership committee i think without um without involvement neither from the board nor from the uh from from the board of trustees um and the while the the board is answering to the board of trustees um the natural choice i think in, in my mind would be then that the board of trustees as the one electing um the the board and dmc um, is, um, is also the one then um, at least formally um, tasking the auditor to do the work. So, so that's, in, in my mind, a much cleaner approach. Um, and thanks, Gustavo, for uh, 
for uh, agreeing with me. Yes, Gustavo, go ahead. Uh, just to say, I, I don't know how we will do it, but it's in our statutes and uh, we should find a way to, to, to do it. Uh, um, and um, probably uh, this process could be uh, uh, could, could be a, a key process to try to reach more uh, uh, um, participation from the members as they all said uh, in the the past comment uh, if uh, uh, we want more participation from the members we should organize ways to have it as for uh, we we uh, should uh, uh, create our way the dogman foundation way to to allow the participation uh, by the members uh, there's a lot of other uh, uh, um, examples like uh, debian for example uh, they heard uh, a lot of uh, opinions from the members and have uh, uh, systems for participation. I, I don't know. It's a, an example. We have others. We have uh, uh, other uh, uh, projects uh, that can inspire us, but we need to have ways to improve the member participation. Um, this could be a key reason to start the project, th this process, to improve the uh, um, participation. Um, and at the same time, um, have our what we need from the statutes. Thank you. Okay, any other questions or thoughts? Let's wait if there are no questions directly. Um, from raised hands, then we'll wait a bit longer in case anybody's writing in the chat. Um, AL writes something here, which I will read out as always. AL writes, something I have encouraged some board of directors candidates and mentioned to Florian as well, is that many board of trustees members who have very little or no experience running organizations would benefit from some kind of organizational training, some philosophy of how popular organizations are run, perhaps a bit of the law or, or legal support, some scenarios of interaction of organs, etc. Not really related to these membership committee elections, though. Then Shinji writes, it was my understanding that it would be better for the membership committee to have a more open process in selecting auditors. I agree with you on that. But will it work with open discussion? And I don't know if it's okay to release information about the estimates from the auditor to the members. All right, let's look at the statutes and see where to go from there. AL writes, referring to Shinji's last comment about 
releasing information about estimates from the auditor, ALYS, not only is it okay, it is almost always mandatory. So if we have no more questions, maybe we are done for this meeting, but let's again wait another minute or so in case um, somebody's writing an answer for the chat. Uh, so let's wait a minute or so. And then, then if, there is, if there are no more hands raised or no more messages in the chat for me to read out, then we will wrap up for today. Then I think I think we are finished with this, the third of the membership committee candidate town hall meeting. So uh ah, Gustavo. Um just a comment about AL uh, suggestion. Um uh, yes, I I agree with you, it's a nice suggestion. Uh I think we need uh to talk more about other kind of free software uh, uh, organizations and how uh, they work uh, in a formal aspects. Uh, here in Latin America, we start a connection with the GNOME Foundation uh, through the Latin American members, and we are trying to, to get some ideas from them uh, about events, about uh, membership, about formal process, about um, budget e at all. And I, I agree, we can uh, start something uh, looking for the others with the same kind of structure as we have. Thank you. And AL, AL responds here in the chat to Gustavo. Very much agree with that kind of initiatives, both direct and via our advisory board. So yes, if there are no more questions, comments, then um, let's wrap up this call. Of course, um, we can continue discussions on the uh, forum as well on um, board discuss. So. Um, uh, yeah, but thanks uh, to all the candidates for taking part. Thanks to all the community members for joining and uh, raising questions and giving feedback as well. Uh, again, this is the third uh, and the last of the uh, town hall meetings. So we at um, TDF will work on the video recording, edit it, upload it, hopefully today. Maybe we can do it um, today as well uh, and then um, share that uh, uh, with other members as well. As I mentioned at the start of this meeting, the video from yesterday's meeting is already online on YouTube and now on YouTube as well. Um, so uh, everyone, members can watch that. But yeah, we'll work on getting this recording up as soon as possible. So thanks a lot, everybody. Take care and bye-bye. Thanks for organizing all this and running. Bye-bye. See you, Fox. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Recording has stopped. Recording has stopped.